Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel. Support for today's podcast comes from Pete and Jerry's Organic Eggs. Pete and Jerry's has done one thing for generations, produce eggs you can feel good about. Their small family farmers across the country take pride in raising hens and providing certified organic free-range eggs that meet the highest standards. They do it because it's the right way to farm, and they want you to believe in what you buy. Learn more at PeteAndJerry's.com. That's P-E-T-E-A-N-D-G-E-R-R-Y-S.com. Writer Jessica Knoll recently published an op-ed in the New York Times titled Smash the Wellness Industry. And in that piece, she suggests that our pursuit of wellness, or what we call wellness anyway, is actually undermining both our health and our happiness, especially that of women. I'd like to share a few reflections on this article, but first, I want to take a moment to answer a question that came in on the Nutrition Diva listener line. Hi, Monica. I was wondering if you could please let me know if there's any difference between fresh fish and canned fish. What are the nutritional differences? Is there any pros and cons to canned fish and fresh fish, for example, canned salmon versus fresh salmon? Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Canning involves subjecting food to heat and pressure in order, of course, to extend its shelf life. Now, any form of processing can affect the nutritional value of foods, but the primary nutrients that we most value in fish, things like protein, omega-3 fatty acids, selenium, and so on, are pretty heat stable. So we wouldn't expect any major losses there. Canned fish is certainly cheaper, and there's virtually no risk of spoilage or bacterial contamination. On the other hand, canned fish are likely to be higher in sodium. And of course, the canning also affects the flavor and the texture of the fish, but those are really matters of personal preference. One surprising advantage of canned salmon is that it is much higher in calcium than fresh salmon, perhaps because the part of the fish that they process for canning is closer to the tail and has lots of tiny little bones. Now, these are too small and soft for you to notice, but they do add a significant amount of calcium. But at the end of the day, both fresh and canned fish are a great source of healthy protein. And thanks so much for that question. If you have a nutrition question you'd like me to answer on the podcast, you can call me at 443-961-6206 and leave me a message. In her recent New York Times op-ed, novelist Jessica Knoll recounts her recovery from what she describes as a poisonous relationship between a body I was indoctrinated to hate and food I had been taught to fear. Like many successful young women, Noel got sucked into a toxic culture of extreme dietary restriction, excessive exercise, and various other rituals of purification and penance, all packaged in the guise of wellness. Now, as I'm sure you've noticed, dieting has become something of a dirty word lately, and rightfully so. It clearly doesn't work. But the most toxic aspects of that dieting culture— the pursuit of an unrealistic body ideal at the expense of your physical comfort and emotional well-being, these haven't gone away. According to Noel, dieting has simply been rebranded as wellness, and then under the cover of this benign new label, it's continuing to perpetuate the same fraud. We now have a generation of wellness influencers selling detoxes, cleanses, and elimination diets as a way of looking and feeling your best. In her pursuit of wellness, or more accurately, thinness, Noel found herself alternating between bouts of quote-unquote clean eating and violent binging. That's not wellness. That's not looking or feeling your best. Fortunately, Noel finally found relief from this unhealthy cycle working with a dietitian who specializes in intuitive eating, a process that she describes in more detail in her article, and I've included a link to that in the show notes for today. I have a few thoughts to add to Noel's article, but first, today's episode is supported by Policy Genius. Most of the time, we think of procrastination as a bad thing, but if you need to get life insurance and you've been putting it off, 
Congratulations! While you were procrastinating, Policy Genius found a way to make it easier than ever. Policy Genius is the easy way to shop for insurance online. In just two minutes, you can compare quotes from top insurers to find your best price. Once you apply, the Policy Genius team will handle all the paperwork and the red tape with no sales pressure and no hidden fees. They can even help you find the right home, auto, or disability insurance, too. My mission with this podcast is to make it easier for you to take care of your health. So I'm excited to work with a sponsor that also wants to make things easier for you. Check out Policy Genius at policygenius.com. It's the easy way to compare all the top insurers and find the best value for you. Hey, nobody wants to shop for life insurance, and that's why Policy Genius made it easy. Today's episode is also sponsored by Undeniably Dairy. One in six kids in the U.S. faces hunger, and that number goes up during the summer months when children lose access to school meal programs. This summer, America's dairy farmers are partnering with Feeding America to nourish families and to fight child hunger. Did you know that 95% of dairy farms are family-owned and that most milk is made less than a two-hour drive from where it's sold? So when you buy cheese, yogurt, or milk, you're supporting hardworking dairy farm families near you. Help get food to families who need it. You can go to giveagallon.com to donate to a food bank in your community. And then stay tuned at the end of this episode to hear more about this initiative from dairy farmer Jamie Van Dam. Now, Jessica Knoll makes some really important points in her article, but there are a couple of things that I'd like to respond to. And one is the idea that men are largely immune from this unwholesome influence. She describes at the top of her article having lunch with some highly accomplished and successful women who spent the first part of their meeting bashing their bodies and comparing their respective diet rules. And Noel fantasizes that the men at the next table were unburdened by these concerns, digging into their food and engaged in more interesting or at least less self-loathing conversations. However, I think she may underestimate the number of men who are similarly consumed by the pursuit of an unrealistic body image. It looks a little different, but the pseudo-wellness culture has gone after men just as hard. He may be chugging protein shakes instead of celery juice, popping testosterone boosters instead of fat-burning supplements, and obsessing over whether his calves are too thin instead of whether his thighs are too fat, but he has fallen into this same trap. Secondly, Noel points out that the wellness industry attracts a lot of women who don't actually need to lose weight in order to be healthy. What they really need to lose is their disordered body image and fear of food. And thankfully, it sounds like Noel is well on her way. But let's not forget that the majority of American adults are not at a healthy weight, and they are just as susceptible to these false promises of the pseudo-wellness industry and just as poorly served by the extreme and unwholesome regimens that promise to deliver fast weight loss. And finally, Noel says that she'll probably never love her body. I think what she really means is that she'll never love the way her body looks, and I do think that that's an important difference, but my advice to her is never say never. As she continues to get even more distance from the toxic culture that she's describing in her article, she may find that her idea of what a lovable body looks like continues to evolve. I'm glad Noel wrote this piece. Unhealthy influences cloaked in the garb of wellness deserve to be called out for what they are. But let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. There is also an authentic wellness movement that is gaining traction, one that offers a more balanced and realistic view of what health and wellness look like. Despite the overlap in terminology, it's not too hard to distinguish them. Steer clear of regimens that are restrictive, extreme, isolating, difficult, or dogmatic, and look instead for approaches that are flexible, inclusive, and sustainable. Your goal is not to have a perfect life, perfect body, or even a perfect diet. As my friend Dr. Yoni Friedhoff likes to say, your goal should be to live the healthiest life that you can enjoy living. And to that end, I believe that your ideal weight is much more than a number on the scale or on a BMI chart. Yes, of course you want to be healthy, but You also want to feel happy with the way your body looks, feels, and functions. And equally important, you need to feel comfortable and content 
in the lifestyle that it takes to sustain that body. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your experiences on this topic. You can find me on Facebook at Nutrition Diva. And coming up is some really important information about child hunger and what we can do to help fight child hunger in our communities. But before I hand it over to Jamie, I wanted to let you know about a free workshop that I'll be offering this weekend on the topic of sustainable weight loss. And you can register to attend by going to wayless.life slash workshop. Dairy farming in New Mexico can be tough. Just ask Jamie Van Dam. I am Jamie Van Dam. I'm from Clovis, New Mexico, and I am a wife, mother, and dairy producer. But it's also a rewarding place to work and raise a family. Jamie gets to instill a love of hard work and the land in her kids, while enjoying a few side benefits unique to dairy parents. We spend a lot of our time there in the summer. My oldest son, um, will be seven soon, and he and his younger brother, it's their job to go and, you know, pick up buckets and pick up bottles and put them back in their places beside their hutches. And, you know, now it's, it's really fun for them because what we view as work to them is fun. And so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. They still, you know, love to work as much when they're 16, you know, as they do now. <laughs> You become a parent and you realize that what your dad was trying to do was to get you good and tired before you went home. Food on Jamie's farm is plentiful, but not all children find themselves in the same situation. Childhood hunger and malnutrition are real problems in the United States. One in six kids in America faces food insecurity, and Jamie's part of the country is no exception. So she joined an organization built to fight that problem. I became a United Dairy Women member about seven years ago. Our milk mission was started about 15 years ago when some dairy women in the community realized that the children in the children's homes in Portales were having to eat their cereal dry with no milk because they didn't have money for dairy products. So then those women got together and you know, realized the need in the community to help these children. And food insecurity is an issue that needs to be fought against year round especially in the summer, when students lose access to the free meal programs they get in schools and grow to rely on. When a new children's home opened up in her area, Jamie knew she wanted to help its founders provide their kids with the nutrition they need, and she wasn't going to wait around for them to come to her. I probably forced it a little bit, actually. <laughs> so when, when the children's home first opened up, I went there in person before they had even gotten any kids yet, and I said, welcome to Clovis. I'm Jamie Van Dam. I'm a dairy producer, and I'm also with uh, United Dairy Woman, and we would just be so tickled to provide your kids with the recommended three servings of dairy every day for the entire year. And we had those kids out to the dairy, and let me just tell you, they had a ball. They came out, they saw our way of life, and, and I hope that they know how loved they are by people that they've never even met before. And I think that that's what we do when we donate. Donating dairy products to food insecure homes can make a crucial difference in the lives of the children in them. And now you can help by going to giveagallon.com and donating today. The dairy industry and Undeniably Dairy are teaming up with Feeding America, and we're just trying to raise awareness surrounding the issue of childhood hunger and to ultimately inspire people to provide children with the nutrition that they need to grow and thrive. Any little bit helps. The Nutrition Diva Show is edited by Karen Hertzberg, produced by Nathan Sems, and supported by our wonderful team at Macmillan Podcasts. And that includes Kathy Doyle, Michelle Margulis, Emily Miller, and Morgan Ratner. You'll find a transcript of today's show, along with our entire archive of Nutrition Diva podcasts at quickanddirtytips.com. Thanks for listening and have a great week.